All right, guys, this is being recorded, and some of you guys that have watched some of my other webinars know that I begin this with, watch this again. I can't emphasize that enough, and somebody actually reached out to me not too long ago and was like, do I have to watch the same webinar again? Well, I would say if you're a new options trader, then yeah, probably watch the same one again, because then you get uh, the same information. You're going to retain that information longer when you watch it really soon afterwards. But if you are uh, a little bit familiar with the way I teach options and or are a little bit more familiar with options, absolutely watch one of the other uh, segments that I've done on the same option strategy. Uh, because when we're doing these different segments, you know, one, I'm uh, really concentrating on making it very simple to understand like I did in one of my previous ones, learning the options. And then on this one with volatility, all about volatility, I'm really concentrating on the volatility component of these uh, strategies. So make sure that if, if you're a little bit more familiar with options, not necessarily watch the same one, but there's other ones out there like on the short call that you could watch again and get a different perspective as to uh, maybe it's data component or something like that, or uh, breaking it down uh, a little bit uh, in smaller components and easier to understand if this one was a little bit confusing to you, let's say. All right, so we're gonna be doing dealing with high volatility strategies, which is the perfect environment right now for premium selling traders, okay, because we've got this high implied volatility, we're starting to see volatility come out. If you expect volatility to continue to come out like I do, at least for the next couple of weeks, then this is, like I said, the perfect environment for something like the short call. And um, and I'll explain all of that. I kind of lost my train of thought. I was going to say something else there. Um, all right, let me go over a couple of things real quick. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal. I've been commentating, or uh, for my commentary, I should say, on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Started trading in college and decided to move to Chicago to start working on the floor of the Board of Trade. So I've been trading stocks, options, and all of those things since. Uh, so, and I've done that in just about all market conditions with options on all of these different products. So uh, I've traded just about everything from the floor and away from the floor uh, in just about every market condition, for quite, to be quite honest. All right, this basically goes over any opinions, news, research and analysis or other information does not constitute investment advice, okay? At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some of these different strategies, but it's up to you to implement it into your portfolio in your own way. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, follow me on Twitter. Uh, JQ, I believe, was talking about earnings coming up. Uh, I tweet out my earnings trades. I don't tweet out all my other trades. Uh, my other trades I uh, talk about in the daily market commentary, but these earnings trades, because I implement those in... Uh, my portfolio very close to the end of the day. Uh, I don't have enough time to get that out to you any other way. That's probably the fastest and uh, most streamlined way. And you can follow our parent company at Pro, Pro Trader Strap for all kinds of market wisdom and uh, other perks. All right, like I mentioned, this is going to be on the short call. One thing I wanna mention with the short call and the volatility and everything else going on here Talking heads out there always uh, complain about the short call, okay? They think that there's way too much risk in it for the average investor. Average investor. I completely disagree with that. The fact of the matter is, is this short call, the way that I set it up, has the higher probability of success from even just buying a stock, you guys. You know, when you go out and buy a stock, you have a 50-50 probability of making money on that. And at the end of the day, you have risk all the way to zero, right? So when they're talking about you should invest in stocks and all of those things, well, for one, you're beholden to market direction. Two, people don't realize that when they buy stock, it can go to zero, all right? And But everybody looks at the upside. With a short call, we're going to be selling this at a location where the probabilities are two to three times better than you would if you were just to go out and maybe say short a stock. Because when you go out and short a stock, your probabilities of success are 50-50, just like when you go out and buy a stock. 
All right. Our probability, we're going to have an 85% probability of success with this. So how is it that all of these talking heads say that these short calls, naked strategies are too much risk for the average investor? It's ridiculous, you guys. When you talk about probabilities, if you have a higher probability of success, you know, yes, there's more risk in it in that you have unlimited uh, risk to the upside, but the same thing goes as if you were to short that stock, right? You have unlimited risk to the upside. If you buy it, or if we were talking about a short put here, you know, if you bought the stock, you have risk all the way to zero. Well, with the short put, yeah, you have risk all the way to zero, but your probabilities of success are 85% versus 50%. What would you rather take? All right. So it, it really, you can obviously tell it annoys me that uh, when people talk about how dangerous naked strategies are. Well, when you talk about the probabilities of success versus other opportunities, then it's not really that big of a, uh, of a, of a uh, lift. All right. So let's go over a couple of other things with the short call before we get into all the essentials to success. One of them is we need to have a bearish assumption. Now I have market neutral in here, which is also another benefit to this, right? But really you want a bearish assumption to come up with it. Uh, if you had a market neutral necessarily, I have other strategies specifically for a market neutral strategy. But what I'm trying to say here is, you know, if you have a bearish assumption and it's really market neutral or you know, you're market neutral to bearish or whatever, this would be the strategy to put on because if you shorted a stock, obviously, and it was market neutral, that market doesn't go anywhere, then you don't make any money. Well, with the short call, if the market doesn't go anywhere, we're still going to make money, all right? And theta decay, we're gonna exploit theta decay in this. Um, the way we're gonna do this is every, when you sell an option, you get every single day a couple of pennies pulling out of that premium and that goes into your pocket, all right? And even if the market slightly goes higher, you're still going to be able to make money. Every day that goes by, you get paid, all right? The market can go up, but because of that theta component that we're gonna talk about, option prices will drop. I mean, that's all of the things being equal, right? I mean, that's not volatility changing or anything else. So every day that goes by, we can look at, um, not volume and open interest, I want the, uh, so every day that goes by, we look at this theta, every day that goes by, these premiums are going to decrease by this amount, two pennies a day. Now that's pretty good. You do not fighting the market then. You know, when you buy premiums, you're fighting this theta component that's constantly ticking away. Uh, on the floor, we used to call theta the thief in the night that would come and steal your premiums. Well, when you're an option seller, uh, you are you leave the front door open, right? All right. So, and finally, the one we really want to talk about is this volatility crush. We want to take advantage of volatility coming out. And we've seen that happening recently quite dramatically. Sorry, I accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, it's not going to do anything crazy for me, uh, except give me a headache. Um, so let me pull up the options screen again. So as theta or as volatility comes out, we're going to lose this in premium, okay? It's a positive on the calls right now because as volatility goes up, it adds to the calls here. As volatility goes down, this becomes a negative. All you have to do with options, you guys, with all of these things, some of them are negative, is think about it in terms of directional or uh, if the direction of volatility goes down, then that's a negative, which causes a negative to a positive, creates a negative, right? Anytime you have a negative plus a positive, you have a negative, right? A negative plus a negative equals a positive, okay? So those math, uh, rules still are applicable. As volatility goes down, vol goes down, that's a negative to the premiums. As vol goes up, that's a positive to the premiums. So as every 1% comes out of this volatility, when volatility comes out by 1%, it goes from 28.85 to 27.85, this premium will decrease by the 7 cents. And we can easily show that uh, and that's all other things, again, being equal, where we're not talking about 
a day going by or any of that. We're just talking about the volatility so we can isolate it. We're not gonna adjust the price. We're not gonna adjust the date, okay, to keep those other things remaining the same. But what happens when I go over here and I do a uh, negative one, let's see if it works when I do that. It's not going to, I didn't think it would. Um, so a negative 1% volatility, that's not a volume, that's a volatility adjustment. So it's going to synthetically take 1% out of this volatility. And you will see that when we do that, as the volatility, oh, I hit reset, that's what the problem was. Um, so when we go and do that, let me make sure I get that right, negative 1%. So we do that, we drop it by 1%. This is what I was talking about. This was going to decrease by 7 cents. Well, if the mark is 74 and a half and you subtract 7 cents from that, you can see that you get 67. It's close enough. I mean, they, they're rounding it up on this particular mark. But the fact of the matter is you can see that it decreased by what that volatility quotient was, all right? So that's what we're looking for, volatility coming out. And if we even went to look at the charts, you can see we've had extreme high volatility. Volatility starting to come out on it. You guys saw me uh, in the daily market commentaries play the Starbucks. I was shorting calls in Starbucks. You can see the market rallied and I was able to easily cover my strategy. I was directionally wrong, but I got the volatility coming out at the right time. And that superseded any directional move that I was experiencing because that volatility came out so quickly. All right, you can see that it went from basically, from when I started entering, I would have to say it was probably close to right around in here, I think, um, it was last week. So it went from 30, let's say 32, all the way down to just a couple of days ago, it came out to 28, so I got 4% coming out of it. And the theta helped me out as well, right? I, I gained theta, or I, had that theta erosion every single day. But the point was, is if you guys were watching the daily market commentaries, I sold calls in Starbucks. And the day after I sold those, those calls, it continued to rally. It wasn't anything massive, but you can see I had a bearish assumption and these markets are going up, All right? It was mostly that volatility component that, that helped me out. And that's why I spent, I, I go into these essentials to success here in a minute and have details in and around every single uh, uh, component that I'm looking at. Because when you follow those rules, you are increasing your probabilities of success, right? So, I, and I'll explain that as we go through here. So let's look at the first one, the right environment. I've talked about this a little bit. This is all about volatility. So the environment, when I'm talking about the environment, we need high implied volatility percent for each particular underlying. Again, if we flip back to the uh, platform here, you can see implied volatility percent over here above 50. All of these would be uh, candidates for selling call premium. JQ, I saw your question. I'll, I'll get to it uh, towards the end. Just remind me if uh, a lot of questions come up and I miss you out. Uh, so, anything above an implied volatility percent above 50. Now, everybody doesn't have this. I have the uh, um, the uh, the code that goes in here that, that creates this. So if you need that, you guys can reach out to us. Um, and the other thing is, is if you don't have that and you wanna just do the math in your head, basically what this is, is a calculation. And we have a sum in the numerator and a sum in the denominator, and we're just dividing those two totals against each other. And the sum that we're trying to find in the numerator in the top of the fraction is you take where the current implied volatility is, is 28, and subtract that by the low, which is 12. So we have 16 in the numerator. We divide 16 by the sum of the high minus the low. So we have uh, 33 minus uh, let's just call it 13, just to round it up. So we have 16 divided by 30. You can tell that that is in the upper um, 80, what is that, 80 percentile, all right? From my math, it's 76.34 if we do the math and uh, outside of that, but uh, mine's closer, mine kind of put it at 80%. So that would fit this rule. Anything 
a stock with implied volatility percent of above 50. All right. Really pretty easy. Last week, it was like throwing darts. At, and I don't know if there were maybe but one or two below 50 implied volatility percent about a week ago. And an ETF should be above 30. All right. And that's pretty easy to find too. An ETF, the reason why we pick above 30 rather than 50. And I don't have a problem if you stay above 50, especially right now in this environment. But generally speaking, with ETFs, you know, there's several different stocks in that ETFs where um, if you had some food ones up here where you had Yum and CMG, well, some of those consumer staples down here might have a very low implied volatility uh, percent. And that melds out all of that um, all of that volatility in a sense. So it brings down that volatility percent uh, for the ETF. So basically, you know, XLF above 30, that works, okay? XLK above 30, that works. Does that make sense for you? Alan, uh, email us, you're gonna have to email us. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking for, for the environment. So this is our checklist, the essentials to success. If I wanna do the short call, picking the right environment, it has to be above an IV percent of 50 for a stock and above 30 for an ETF. Picking the right underline. Now, this is really important because everybody has their favorite stocks out there. Now, I even look at stocks sometimes that don't fit this rule, but I'm not going to trade options in and around it. Like I'll chart them and stuff like that because maybe it has a close correlation to something else. But I try to stick to this rule pretty hardcore. I mean, it, it is one of the major factors. The reason why, um, especially when you're getting into uh, more legs of these strategies, like the iron condor, the butterfly and things of that nature, when you have to give up a lot of edge to get in, you're going to have to give up about that much edge to get out. So when you're looking at Apple with one or two, three, you know, two, three cent wide markets, then you only have to maybe give up one cent of edge to get filled. But if that market was say, you know, 25 cents wide, then you're gonna to have to probably give up 10 cents to get in and 10 cents to get out, right? So 20 cents of movement of lost uh, yield really causes some problems because if we were talking about this theta component and volatility didn't change, but theta component, if it cost me 10 cents to get in and 10 cents to get out on this particular stock, let's say, it would take me, you know, almost 10 days to just get back to break even with this theta component, right? Because theta comes out two cents a day. Well, if I needed to get to 20 cents, it would take me 20 days just to get back to break even on trying to get in and out of this trade, right? Or if you look at it, I sold this and 10 days goes by then, or five days goes by, and then I've, I've made up at least my uh, entry loss, you know, that 10 cents I had to give up, right? So, we want to make sure these markets are tight. And my rule of thumb with this is move the desk or anything under $100, we're looking at 10 cents wide, something inside of 10 cents wide. This fits it. These are only three cents wide, right? So that would be a stock or an underlying that we would be uh, able to implement this strategy around, okay? If you are a... Uh, a, a, an options trader and you've traded a lot of options or you know a particular underlying like the back of your hand, uh, then, you know, and it doesn't necessarily fit to this rule, then you can stretch that. Let's say that if under a hundred dollars stock, you're looking at 10, under 10 cents wide, that's a green light. A hundred under under a hundred dollar stock and they're fifth, up to 15 cents wide, you know, then I would say that that is becoming a yellow light. Anything over 25 cents on under a hundred dollar stock, it's a red light, guys, get out. Don't even think about it, just move on, all right? But under a hundred dollar stock should be 10 cents wide. Stocks over a hundred dollars like IBM, move the decimal place three ticks to the left and it should be within that uh, penny increment, so 12 cents wide. We move this three ticks to the left, we get 12 cents wide, go down here and look at this, and you can see that it fits that rule. So follow that. Again, um, you know, if you wanted to throw 
another nickel on a stock between 100 and uh, 200. Uh, so that would be, you know, you just add a nickel into that. So it'd be 17 cents wide, make that a yellow light. Uh, and, you know, like uh, $200 going up, you're just going to have to kind of incrementally add that nickel in, let's say. But I would not go too much further outside that because to me, you're just, you're, you're asking for a lot of problems. Right now, um, because we're seeing this high volatility, we are going to see some markets a little bit wider than what meets my rule. So just start looking at those as yellow lights in and around that. Because as volatility expands, uh, the people that are making a lot of those markets have to offset some of those options. So they know in the time that you bought the option from them or uh, sold the option to them, they have to go out and hedge that. And with volatile markets, there is some volatility risk in that uh, legging process. So they're gonna make it a little bit wider in order to cover some of that risk. So don't be shocked if you see those uh, happening like that. And picking the right duration. What we're looking here for the duration is we want that theta component to be at you know, some of the highest levels we're gonna see. And the way we find that is when we go over to this little chart here, it shows the at the money and we're gonna be selling out of the money. So the, the theta uh, uh, erosion isn't gonna happen exactly like this line, okay? This just gives you a representation of how theta starts accelerating that decay of options premium in and around, you know, 45 to 35 days to expiration. Inside of 35 days to expiration, you get 35 to uh, seven days, you get about 50% drop in premium. So the idea is to try and implement this strategy just before all of that happens, right in here. Now you guys heard me talking, we got earnings landing in all of this area here, a lot of earnings coming out in this uh, option expiration. And you know you can look at trying to take advantage of something inside of this, but the problem is, is we've probably seen most or at least half of that massive theta decay happening already, all right? So in that, I would move out to the 35 days and start looking for that strategy in that 35 days to expiration area, you know, closest to. Does that make sense? We don't want to sell premium way out here because it just takes too long. Just if nothing, if the market didn't move, volatility didn't change, you know, that's a long time to wait for that theta component. I'd much rather be in here and have that theta really start eroding quickly. All right, and picking the right strikes. This is really important, you guys. We're going to be looking at a one standard deviation uh, strike, which is going to correlate to the 16 delta, all right? One thing to note though, you guys, a lot of stocks when they're under, let's say, especially $50, that 16 delta is going to be toggling in and around 30 cents or maybe less. If you're getting less than 30 cents, especially for newer traders, I would probably pass on this strategy because I look at taking you know, profit early, which in this regard is gonna be about 50% of max profit, and to get in and get out with the uh, with all the commissions, you're not going to make a ton of money on it for 15 cents. It's going to be pretty close to you know maybe a nickel. They might make more money on the trade than you did. So make sure you're trying to get at least more than 30 cents, especially for your newer traders that are going to be following my rule uh, of of getting out at 50 percent of max profit. If you are a newer trader, just know and you're only collecting 30 cents, you're probably, in order to make it worth uh, your risk, have to uh, try and get out, if you sold it for 30 cents, get out for like 10 cents, all right? That was something that got brought up last time and it is true. Um, and I usually end up squeezing those out a little bit more too. Um, and the reason why we're picking that 16 Delta, remember I said it was a one standard deviation move. Everybody's seen the bell curve. Some people even got graded on it in high school. Well, if we look at this as being the calls and this, the negative side being the puts, just to put it into perspective, this is the symbol for standard deviation. So one standard deviation move, when we're selling that strike, means you basically add up the 
probabilities out here, and that's equivalent to your delta, which this is going to add up to be very close to 16, right? So what this is saying when we look at this chart, that basically to land out here somewhere past this line is only a 16% probability. So when we're selling this call, that means we only have a 16% probability of our call finishing in the money by one penny at expiration, on the day of expiration. That's your probability. Now, there are higher, you will have a higher probability of the market coming up and kissing your strike and then maybe falling back out by the time the expiration happens. That, that probability is two times the delta, all right? Two times delta is your uh, probability of getting kissed, all right? Is what we used to say, kissed on the floor. All right, you have a much higher probability of getting kissed than, uh, you know, taken to the woodshed. All right, so two times the delta is a probability of getting kissed. That means the market rallies up, it hits my strike, and then basically falls back down again. All right, so that's what we're looking for. There is a higher probability of that happening, but what I'm trying to do by teaching you this you know what your chances of this happening are, it's going to help you sleep at night. What I try to do with all my webinars is take this fear out of trading options because there's so many talking heads and, and governing bodies that don't understand options that are the ones that are making the uh, statements on mainstream media or writing the laws saying that we shouldn't be doing this or we have to have certain kinds of um, levels of options experience in order to get in and out of these, okay? So I want you guys to lift the veil off of this and realize it's not as scary as what everybody is saying, especially when we're talking about probabilities. I mean, if you had an 85% probability of success, aren't you willing to take a little bit more risk I am, for sure. Then, then pay a lot and have very little probability of success. All right, and I mentioned this with the knowing your exit strategy. I'm looking at taking 50% of my max profit. Now, if you get in and out of trades based on, say, Fibonacci or the you know the um, the VWAP somebody has or um, monkey bars the 50-day uh, moving average, any of those things, you know, absolutely continue with that. For instance, if you got in to IBM and thought, you know, it, it, you were playing it to the upside, let's just say for this example, and you thought, if it breaks below this, then I'm out. Well, then that's where I would get out of my option strategies. Same idea, right? If I sold calls that were, let's say, above the 131 area in IBM and it broke through this level, then that might be where I'm getting out. If I said, hey, you know, I'm selling this because I don't think it's going to break through this resistance and it does and settles there and all of a sudden it's broken your, your pattern, then get out. You don't have to uh, look at my rules, all right? And usually with mine, I'm looking for it to uh, pierce through and basically... Um, kind of break one of my chart patterns for this as well, all right, to get out. You know, you can look at it like, all right, um, I'm getting out for 50% of max profit, but I'm willing to not lose more than, uh, you know, three times the premium I sold. So if I sold it at 50 cents, when it's trading $1.50, I'm getting out, all right? I usually am going to stay in this until my market assumption changes, and that usually has to do with, um, you know, uh, data, whether it's economic or it breaks the, the chart pattern. Anytime I, my market assumption changes, I'm going to get out. And speaking of that, my market, market assumption changing, this goes back to your brain and how we all basically disseminate information. There's this thing, it's called your limbic and it's called your gut, really. And a lot of people look at it. Anytime your gut is telling you to do something, whether it's get in or get out of a trade, Follow that instinct because your brain processes so much information that 
that you can't possibly remember everything, but it does process it in a way that it can come up with a conclusion in a sense. But that limbic brain doesn't have any way of conveying like a voice. It doesn't have a voice. That that resides in the outside of our brain, our, our uh, more, um, uh, our newer brain, if you will. Um, that has the, brain, the part of the brain that separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom for the most part, because that's the reasoning aspect where you can reason yourself. How many times have you reasoned yourself out of a gut instinct and realized my gut was right? Well, it's because your gut is trying to tell you, but it doesn't know how to. So follow that gut instinct. I'm, I'm uh, a huge proponent of you guys following that. All right. I follow mine. I start looking at something, even if my, I haven't changed my thing and I just look at it and I just go, I just don't like it. I don't know why. Pull the ripcord, get out. All right. So know your exit strategy, you know, support resistance. Uh, you can go three times the premium. So if I sold it 50 cents and it's three times higher than, uh, then I'm out. I would stick to if my market assumption changes for whatever reason and or I got a gut instinct or it breaks a Fibonacci or one of my uh, reasons for getting into this strategy. OK, it breaks of support resistant. The psychology course paid off. That's right. I did. JQ has watched a couple of the webinars where I mentioned at the beginning, I started out in college with a psychology degree, started trading and switched it to finance before moving to Chicago. So, yes, and I did say on the floor that my psychology degree came in uh, more useful than my finance degree on the floor, for sure. And this is part of it, you guys. Go with that gut instinct. You don't like it. Don't do it. Move on. There's other opportunities. There's hundreds and hundreds of opportunities out there waiting to be uh, picked. All right. So on this one, know your exit strategy. Stick with what you usually do. The other thing with this. I write down my strategies or all my trades and everything else. Why I got into them, I highly suggest you do this too, because then you have the data to really go back and look at what was working and what's not, all right? And when you write it down, you're more likely to follow through with it. So if I said I was gonna get out of XYZ stock at 50% of my max profit, I know what I got into the trade for, right? I know exactly where I'm gonna get out of it. I write that number down so that when I see that number happen, I'm out. All right. I remember it. I get out for that 50 percent of max profit. And stick with that. You know, the longer you're trading, so I don't mind just squeezing out a couple opportunities here and there for more than 50 percent of max profit. But just know that, you know, your probabilities might be diminishing a little bit because you've already beaten the probabilities at that point if you're able to get out for 50 percent of max profit. OK. All right. So let's talk about the max profit real quick. Max profit is the premium received minus the commission, okay? Anytime you collect a premium and selling premium strategies, that is your max profit. You can't get any more than that, all right? Your max loss, because we're selling a short call, that, that loss is unlimited. Just like if you shorted a stock, that loss is unlimited. There is no protection to the upside other than your finger on the mouse. That is your protection, so make sure you are staying diligent with this strategy and keeping an eye on it. And then our break even is going to be that short call strike price plus the premium. All right. That's our break even. It's actually minus the premium. So our short call price, uh, actually, no, it is plus the premium. You're right. So uh, we collected a premium. We get to keep that. We sell the 100 strike. Well, because we collected 50 cents, let's say, and we sold the 100 strike, we at 150 cents is where our break even is. Sorry. Uh, let me shut that. Uh, sorry about that. I had a kid show up and the dogs realized. Um, yes, what about a spread to protect? Greg, we can use a spread, short call spread, but I have different rules for that. And I'm going to be talking about that one here in a uh, a week or two. Okay. But we're going to, this actually has a higher probability of success than a spread. It's one of the, it, it's pro the highest probability strategy I can, I can teach to be quite honest. Okay. 
This is your highest probability of success on any option. I mean, yeah, you could sell the one Delta and that's the highest probability, okay? Don't get me wrong. Yes, you could do that. You're gonna collect a penny. You're not gonna make any money on it. But uh, this one, you know, for your bang for your buck, the 16 Delta, you know, that 16-ish Delta, I don't mind if you're going to an 18 or a 20, all right? to collect a little bit more premium. I'm just saying, you kind of start around that 16 Delta, you know your probabilities of success are 84%. If you did the 20 Delta right, then you know your probability of success is only 80%. 25 Delta, your probability of success is 75%, right? So all of those things in line, the 16 Delta gives you the best bang, I think your best, your highest probability of success for the amount of money you're receiving, okay? Ted's asking, Eric, uh, there's the market going to the dogs again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, this needs more margin, so decreased purchase power, right, versus a spread. Yes, you are going to have more margin. This is more margin intensive than the, uh, than the spread, for sure. And one thing to note with that strategy, you know, we can create a spread it's not going to decrease your risk, all right? At least I hope it doesn't because I would hope that you would never hold this strategy to a point of where this came into effect. But one thing I always say with the naked strategy, especially if you're doing it in an IRA, I know a lot of people trade out of their IRAs, I do as well. Then what you would do is this isn't giving me a 16 Delta for IBM, but I would sell you know, the closest is 16 Delta, which is that 20 Delta. And then the first option I can buy for a nickel is where I'm defining my risk, all right? That makes it legal for a IRA, all right? Because it's defined risk, all right? Well, do not ever take this, you know, our risk right now, we, we think it's gonna stay below 130. To go to 150, I would never be in this strategy as a naked strategy that far. And I would hope you would never do it because you have that, um, that feeling of confidence because it's a spread and you have limited risk. This is, if it's trading 150, it is not going to feel like limited risk in your IRA, right? It's going to feel painful. So uh, all that does is just kind of get you out of that whole rule of, um, of how much margin they're going to hold on you. And sometimes when you're buying that nickel uh, strategy, that nickel option, they're only holding, say, margin to the 140 strike or something like that, okay? They're not gonna hold margin all the time, that full spread, okay? All right, so this is the part of the strategy, or part of the webinar, sorry, that I want you guys to throw out some uh, different stocks that you guys like to trade. We'll go through these step-by-step -step to see if it works with a short call uh, stock. Now, we obviously want a bearish to neutral uh, stock, you know, one that we're bearish on. Um, but, you know, and we don't want earnings on this strategy. We were talking about earnings a little bit right before the uh, start of this webinar. We don't want to implement, say, uh, this strategy around CMG, even though it fits the rule of high implied volatility percent, uh, when they have an earnings happening. And uh, Chipotle is going to have an earnings in this next uh, option cycle, this next option expiration, Chipotle has the earnings say landing right around here. Well, my rule for trading options around an earnings cycle is you basically put that on the day of that earnings, whether it's the day of meaning after the close that earnings comes out or the next morning, you're putting it on right at the end of the day before that comes out. So, don't sell this in and around a earnings event. Why? Because you can see when we go into earnings events, volatility has a tendency to rally up and then at least stay high, but afterwards it plummets, right? But if this volatility starts increasing into the earnings event, like we would expect, that's a normal process in the markets, then if that volatility continues to increase and we sold this strategy, you know, 10, 15 days beforehand, think about it. 
We talked about volatility. If volatility increases during the duration of this, it is going to hurt us. So we want to be in a situation where we have volatility coming out of it, or we expect volatility to come out of it. We don't expect volatility to come out of a stock or an underlying where the uh, there's a binary event or some unknown event. A binary event is just something that's unknown, whether it's FOMC or it's a known event that's going to affect the markets. FOMC, um, unemployment or unenjoyment number, the earnings here, um, all of those things are different binary events. So make sure you try and stay away from those. A drug stock would be maybe a trial result or something like that. I think somebody just came out with a trial result just the other day that was pretty good too. Um, so stay away from those binary events if at all possible. So make sure that you know you don't have anything going on. I see uh, somebody already threw out one Macy's. We can take a check check on this one. Now stocks under fifty dollars, it does make it very difficult to get that thirty cents at um, the sixteen delta. But we'll take a look at it. You can see we probably have to go to the 18 Delta. Clearly, I've already done this with Macy's um, not too long ago. I think I just did it uh, today, as a matter of fact, and talked about it in the daily market commentaries. But that was, um, I rolled it down a little bit tighter because uh, I wanted to get a little bit more premium for it um, and it being a lower stock. But this would be the strike I would look to take on this. The, Double check it if you wanted to do this as well. You know, we're looking at the 30 strike here. You could go up to the charts and say, well, you know, if it gets above 30, you know, that's where I'm feeling comfortable because it might come back to the point of control. You know, I'm just giving you the way that I talk with or the way that I walk through my strategies and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think Macy's is going to uh, be able to make it all the way back to this point of control after the, their announcement today. So I think it's going to continue to slide um, because they said they had bad holiday earnings so or holiday sales. So I'm going to expect this to at least, you know, continue down or struggle to rally over the next few weeks. So um, I, I got a little bit more aggressive with this. But if you were like, OK, well, above this point of control or above this Fibonacci level, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm going to sell that 30 delta or uh, that 30 strike, which is the equivalent to the 16 delta. All right. So that I don't have a problem with. You know, you might even say if it breaks above this, then I'm I'm out of that strategy because now it's broke my chart pattern. I don't have a problem with that. You know, stick with your ins and outs of these stocks as if they were regular stocks. But um you know, at first, but start leaning towards the way I'm teaching it. You'll start seeing that uh, that the probabilities work out in your favor. OK, so we could go in there and sell that 30 uh, or that 18 delta. And what we would look for is this to decrease by 50 percent. Right. So we would be looking to get out somewhere around 16, 17 cents. But I would probably wait this out to get to at least maybe 10 to 15 cents so that you can at least get about 20, 25 cents for this, all right? Uh, which makes it a little bit more worthwhile. So yeah, we could do that one. Another one, let's take a look at like say an ETF, uh, XRT, you know, XRT, I would expect because Macy's, we may feel like you missed may, maybe Macy's move because of that. Um, XRT has super wide markets right now. Uh, just make sure during the day session, this is all, you know, when I'm talking about picking the right underlying and it needs to be 10 cents wide or less for a stock under $100 or an ETF under $100. Make sure that rules being applied during the day session. Nobody, especially right now, is really leaving in uh, strategies or leaving in their trades overnight okay so they're they get a little bit wider after the close but think about it if i had to sell this you know i'm and it was this wide i think it's going to be tighter it's going to be like 40 cents at 45 cents or something like that during normal market operations but if, I, if this were the market that i had to deal with especially this one think about it i might have to go all the way down to selling this at 30 cents to get in well Generally speaking, you look at any other $40 stock and this 16 Delta would be probably 30 cents bid. 
right? But the guy's not going to bid it up for you because he's the only guy in there making a market. So stay away from it if it's too wide. XRT was one that I was looking at um, before the close because of that, uh, the, the strike location and everything else. If we looked at the 16 Delta, the 47 calls, selling the 47 calls puts me above this point of control. Now, point of control basically uh, has a tendency to mold out markets. When it gets in and around that point of control, markets have a tendency to calm down a little bit. That's been my market assumption for a little while. I believe it's gonna kind of migrate to that, but you know, with the Macy's thing and the retail sector not maybe doing so well for Christmas, it's going to struggle to get much higher than this. So that 47 strike, I was like, you know what? I, I sell that 47 strike and I collect 50 cents. Remember, what is that? To find our break even, it's the short call strike plus the premium received. So if I sell that 47 strike and I collect about 50 cents, that puts me above this Fibonacci extension, all right? Or yeah, Fibonacci extension. So uh, that, you know, and it breaks above that and settles there, then I'd probably look to cover that because that's why I set it up. I'm selling this 47 strike because it gets me above this Fibonacci line. If that pattern broke, then that's where I would be looking to get out. Uh, Duluth Holdings, you may have seen it on TV commercials. Yeah, it's below 30 cents and the spread's too wide. Yeah, I, I've looked at Duluth. I've, I've uh, started looking at that one a little bit more, kind of waiting for it because I thought that you know, they're, they've been getting a little bit more popular. People might start jumping in there, but they're really just not trading the options uh, to make those tight enough, really. Um, another one would be, uh, who else does it have? A target is another one of those. And you guys get the theme here. I'm kind of bearish in retail. This is one I vetted also. But target looks like volatility is going to come out. I don't think they have earnings landing in this uh, uh area. Let's just double check it with uh, the chart that shows it. So it falls outside of this option expiration. Here's the earnings right here. So I don't have to worry about it. So let's look at it. It's a $68 stock. So it should be about 10 cents wide to the bid offer. You can see this fits that rule uh, even during the day session. And when I mean that, uh, we look at 10 cents wide, look at the ones about 35 days to expiration or closest to these ones that are inside eight days. It's not the spot month anymore. People have like started leaving that and going into the 35 days to expiration. So uh, make sure you follow that rule with these out here. Okay. Look at the 16 Delta stock. We're going to be able to at least sell this probably for about 55 cents. So I would look to get out of this when it's trading around 25 cents. Okay. 50% of my max profit. And that'd be a nice little winner. Does that make sense for everybody? So it's pretty simple. We're selling that 16 Delta option. The probabilities of being in the money at expiration is uh, only a 16% probability of being in the money by one penny at expiration, an 84% probability of it not probability of me getting kissed during the next 36 days is two times the delta. So I've got about a 32% probability, about a 30% probability of during the next 36 days, this market comes up and trades 75. Target trades 75 in the next 36 days. That is about a 30% probability, two times the delta. But not to finish there, the probability of finishing in that is only 16%. All right. Ralph threw out Facebook. I'll check Facebook real quick. Let's check the charts to see if they have an earnings coming up. They don't have earnings, do they? Looks like they do over there, but that's not always right. So let's look at Facebook. So Facebook has that earnings right here. So on the 30th, so for Facebook, I'd probably be looking to implement this strategy if I was bearish Facebook on the 29th or depending after the market on the 30th, I'd, I'd enter it on the 30th because it's after the close. Okay, so I'd stay away from that one. I'll do it. I'll do one more e EWZ. Oops. <clears throat> 
All right, EWZ for Brazil, uh, $42 stock. Sometimes they have wider markets, so let's look at it. EWZ. Um, EWZ, under a $100 stock, should be $0.10 cents wide. It's pretty close. I, I, I think, it, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fit that rule. So then we just basically go out here and look at where the 16 Delta stock, is. there's not a 16, so it's a pick em. I'd probably lean towards the 18, uh, maybe even the uh, the 22 one, just to get a little bit more premium because it's under that $50 stock. But the thing to double check here is say, well, where, where am I comfortable with my support and resistances? And I don't have a problem if you throw up like Fibonacci's and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I just did that dirty. I'm just trying to get it on there to make an example. You know, you might say, well, if it gets above 45, I'm out, things of that nature. We're bearish on this. I believe it's a little overextended the upside. It's going to kind of migrate back to the point of control. Um, those those theories can all be in. 47.80 is the high. I was looking at the 47 and the 46. I'd probably still go with that 46 delta. So my break even is uh, 46.50. I mean, that's 46.50 puts me above this value area high. So 70% of the volume and uh, time has been spent in those areas. So whenever it gets outside of that, it's just overextended. So I would be comfortable selling those 46s, collect that nice premium. It gets me past my break even where my resistance is. So that's how I would walk through that one for myself. Okay and then looking to get out at 50% of my max profit. But started that 16 Delta, play around with it one or two strikes above or below to find your the premium you're really happy with and then work with that. IV percent on uh, EWZ, yeah, but it's an ETF. So because it's an ETF, it, it's above 30. Oh, it's only 17 IV percent. So no, I wouldn't do this for this one. IV percent is only 17. Now you might have been saying the IV over here. This is just implied volatility. Okay. Implied volatility is different for every underlying. So if we look at a chart here and say that this is, um, you know, a 30 implied volatility, that's what that was saying. It's just the implied volatility currently is what that was showing 31. Remember, we have to do the math. The where it's currently trading minus the low and divide that sum by the high minus the low. And that's what makes this down in the lower range that would not make that appropriate. This would be one where we'd be looking to buy premium in because it's so low, All right? You guys have any other questions? All right, so having said that, this is the uh, probably the best offer I can give you. And for $7, you get one month trial. Now think about this, you guys. I'm trying to, every single strategy I go through, I try and break it down to a point where you guys can see the intricacies and all the levers and pulleys that are going into this. Break it down to you know very simple terms. So at the end of the day, we want to take the fear out of trading options, all right? And that's what I try to do by explaining all of these little minute details. Yes, I'm sure some of those details flew over your head. That's why I say watch it again, because the next time through, it's probably going to make a little bit more sense. Also, uh, when you're not fearful, you know, you, you aren't looking to get out all the time. W with my rules, following these specific rules, it's, it's basically built to help you sleep at night, all right? Because when you're trading the probabilities, you know where your risk is and you know when those probabilities are going against you and that helps you get in and out of these trades quicker, all right? The best way to become a better trader is to constantly learn. You guys have obviously done that and clearly made that decision by taking on this webinar and actually asking questions. Uh, but, you know, the only way to really get ahead in this game is to trade the probabilities and know those probabilities. Anybody can teach you how to sell a short call. They're gonna just tell you to go out there and sell a call, that's it, just naked, sell it wherever. 
they're not going to break it down into where the strike location really needs to be in order for you to be successful. And that's how I teach it. I teach how to play the probabilities when those probabilities have gone against us, uh, how we stay mechanical to increase those probabilities even further in our favor. That's options is the only way to really uh, create alpha, right? And when you're using the right tools in the right situation, you're going to be more productive state of mind, be able to put on more strategies. If you put on more strategies, think about those probabilities, you're creating more opportunities. That's going to create confidence because those probabilities will show themselves. All right. All right. So Ted says trial premium membership was the best $7 and then the best $97 I ever spent. I appreciate that, Ted. Cause you know, in these, with these, with the premium membership trial, for one, you get access to me, you guys. You can reach out to me. I know Ted's taken advantage of it. Several other people have taken advantage of it. You can reach out to me. If you have a problem or you have uh, a situation you want to throw to me and say, hey, you know, what would you do in this situation? I'm going to be more than happy to reach out to you. As a matter of fact, I have a no inbox policy, meaning if you send me an email, I'm going to try and clear that email as fast as I can by writing back to you immediately. One is because I know what it's like when you're, you have a question and, and, and we're dealing with money here. You want that question answered immediately. I'm going to be there for you. And if I can't answer that question in an email and I don't like typing several paragraphs, I'll reach out to you and be like, Hey, give me your phone number. I'll give you a call. Let's just walk through this all together. All right. So that is one of the biggest things with the premium membership offer that isn't necessarily on here is that you get unlimited access to me. All right. Also, you get the daily market commentaries. That's what I do every single day in the morning. I go over all the trades that I put on, all the trades that I've taken on, and I tell you about those. If I do an earnings trade, I do it at the end of the day. I still will talk about those in the daily market commentaries at the uh, the next day. Um, also, you get the top trading lesson videos. We just added a whole new section, a whole new uh, uh, syllabus. So you guys can check that out as well. It's very fresh content. And uh, the trading workshops, you get the, all, all of that for $7 in one month, all right? So take advantage of this, especially those daily market commentaries. And if you have any questions on anything, options related or trading related, reach out to me. I mean, if you want to talk about Fibonacci, I'm more than happy to talk to you about Fibonacci. So take advantage of that. Uh, the link is in the chat window, should be in the chat window in just a second. Actually, I kind of dropped the ball there. So let me drop this down and throw it in there real quick while I'm thinking of it. It's going out right now. So the chat window has a hot link that will pull up a, uh, a web page for you, take you straight to this page here. Um, if you're watching this on tape delay, you're going to have to uh, pause the video here and, um, and type this into your URL, okay? Um, you're going to have to pause it and punch it in there. But I just want to thank you guys all. In later webinars, I'm going to be drilling down on different option components, when and where I find those options uh, appropriate. Also, uh, I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, contact us, 310-598-6677. I think somebody was asking about uh, uh, a question. I said, reach out to us. Give us a call right here or trading at protraderstrategies.com, all right? So like I said, you'll have to pause the video to punch that into your URL. If you're attending this video, just go over there and click it in the chat window. It's, uh, it's that easy. So if you want to start increasing your success rate, start following these rules and it'll take the fear out of it. And you guys will be confident options traders, All right? That's all I got for you guys. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. JQ, always on, on top of it. All right, I saw a couple of other questions. Um, if I'm ever in the Phoenix area, uh, could I buy you lunch or dinner? Heck yeah, you don't have to buy me lunch or dinner. We'll just go out for a drink. How's that? Uh, I'll, I'll pay my own way. <laughs> Ted, thank you. Take care. Have a nice evening. Take care. All right, William. You know, if you want to twist my arm, I'll let you. <laughs> we'll go out for drinks for sure. That goes for anybody. All right, guys, have a great one. See you tomorrow in the Daily Market Commentary. Oh, Netflix earnings, yes. Netflix earnings, you know, JQ, I, you know, I had a strangle on around Netflix not too long ago. Uh, after everything that's been going on with Netflix and stuff like that, I'm probably playing Netflix to the upside, to be quite honest. 
I'd probably sell puts in it. I'm bullish Netflix right now after the Golden Globes and stuff like that. And um, it was a crazy number for that movie. What was it with uh, Sandra Bullock? They had a crazy number within seven minutes. How many times people had started watching that video when it first came out or that movie? As soon as it first came out within seven minutes. I mean, it was multi-million people. It was kind of crazy. I'm playing that to the upside for sure. All right. Take care, guys. Looks overextended the last two days. Cycle earnings, big drop. I'll pop it up there. Just take a look. <clears throat> right. So, um, yeah, I got caught in this whole downdraft when I was doing my uh, strangle around it. But, you know, trading the market profile, I think it's going to either stay here or move higher. And I would just say, I think their earnings are going to be pretty good. It may be, but I don't think it's going to probably go too far down, but it, you know, that's going to be a game time decision for me. Um, as, as with any earnings trades, I don't really look at earnings well in advance too much, but my gut right now is telling me I'd probably play this the upside. I don't know if I will when it comes Time, but right now it's telling me it's an upside trade. All right, guys, have a good one. Take care.